Hello everyone, welcome back to the new video. I'm excited to reveal the new banner for my channel and the new logo for my venture Corrospective. Today's video is about simplifying hydrogen embrittlement susceptibility for the whole different types of steels that are present in the industry. Hydrogen embrittlement usually involves formation of hydrogen atoms and which go to the surface of the metal and get adsorbed over there. Because the hydrogen atoms are really the smallest atoms known to date, it is easy for them to get diffused into the steel and get absorbed at the grain boundaries. As is known, it is primarily this formation of hydrogen atoms at the grain boundaries that leads to the loss of strength for these steels. One can imagine this in the form of a cake which has been infused with chocolate chips. If we try to break that cake, we, we will see that the cake primarily breaks at these chocolate chips only. Now, in industry, there is such a lot of literature available and the research for this topic is ongoing since a long time. If we look at the papers, we will usually find that the research starts with selection of a particular steel with variation in the composition. Then the atmosphere to which the steel is exposed is fixed to either H2S or hydrogen gas or a mixture of hydrogen gas, hydrogen sulfide and CO2. The experiment proceeds by mon monitoring how much hydrogen is taken up by steel and then measuring its effect on the mechanical properties. As a result, there is no fixed format even in case of standards as to what is necessary or which graph should we look at when we want to know how much hydrogen will affect what type of steel in what environment. A simple look at the graphs in the entire literature will reveal that every paper has representation of the data in a different manner. Either you may have the variation in the tensile strength with respect to the carbon content or you may have the maximum pressure that a particular steel can sustain in presence of a fixed hydrogen sulfide content or you may have the amount of retained austenite and its effect on the engineering strain. Hence, it is a bit difficult to know which of these graphs would fit for your particular application. So how do you actually select the material? Or how do you actually bring down all that data to be used most appropriately in your case. The best way I always feel is to start from the application rather than starting from the steel composition in the field. It's better to start from the application. So where is the material going to be applied? The reason for going for this first step is even if you're going to use the same steel, you will still have a varied type of an environments to which that steel may be exposed with respect to the industry. As a result, it is a bit difficult if you start from the steel composition. Hence, the best way is to start from the application. And I would say start from the specific application. So the specific application entails that you take note of what is going to be the corrosive medium, what is going to be the temperature and where, with 
by temperature i mean the process temperature as well as the environmental temperature because uh, while the internal temperature will affect the internal stresses on the equipment the environmental temperature may cause accelerated external corrosion as well the next parameter to be noted would be the process pressure so this process pressure would actually bring down your application to the most specific pressure that the equipment would need to sustain once we have narrowed down the process parameters then we come to the possible cathodic reaction the reason for looking at the possible cathodic reactions is it is these cathodic reactions which will actually result from the process parameters and they will lead to the formation of hydrogen hence it is not just the h2s or just the h2 that will actually be the source of hydrogen the total hydrogen composition will depend on how many cathodic reactions are present what are the possible species that will lead to hydrogen evolution and are there any external factors which will in fact lead to a change in the ph which will again change the total hydrogen composition once we know what is going to be the total hydrogen composition from the from all the possible cathodic reactions then we actually take the this composition and look for some lit literature which will give you a plot between hydrogen content and mechanical properties now there is a bit of difference in what kind of mechanical properties may be analyzed in the literature or in the standards so either you may have a variation between the ph and the bulk modulus or the ph and the hardness or even the total hydrogen composition and either of these mechanical properties hence the best way to choose between these mechanical properties is to see what is the most important property out of them that is applicable in your case so that is why choosing the uh, uh, or looking at the application is the uh, most important step sometimes the qualification parameter may be hrc then the prudent way to look at the literature would be to go for that which will give you the plot between hydrogen content and hardness that particular literature may not have the plot between hydrogen content and bulk modulus all the time hence please select which of these or if there is any other parameter what is that critical parameter that you need to monitor with respect to the total hydrogen composition or what is that critical parameter that will define the selection of your material then we actually come to the carbon steel specification because now we know what are all the external parameters that your particular steel has to sustain once you know all these parameters then we can look for carbon steel specifications even in this case usually we only look at the mechanical properties and the chemical composition so the uh, selection depends on whether the mechanical properties match the bulk modulus and whether the composition matches the uh, composition specified in the standards however it is necessary that you look at the carbon equivalence also and you look at the mechanical properties for the carbon equivalence not just for the composition the reason is the mechanic uh, the carbon equivalence will actually define what your microstructure is going to be if you only look at the composition you may not always get the microstructure that is specified or uh, uh, because uh other elements which make up the carbon equivalence will change this microstructure also the mechanical properties for the ca carbon in the composition if for example is 0.1% would be different than for the total carbon equivalence would which would probably come to around 0.2% as well hence 
it is prudent to look at the carbon equivalence and then look at all the mechanical properties to select which of them match the critical mechanical property that is required for your application a small a small example is given here where you find the variation of the total hydrogen content with respect to the ultimate tensile strength when we want to extrapolate such data or make the use of this data rather than directly going to the literature it is better to go through the steps in the previous slide and then see what, uh, then select the correct graph based on what the critical parameter would be that's all for today i hope i, ha I hope this video has been a bit useful to simplify the selection of steel for hydrogen embrittlement susceptibility please let me know if you have any questions do like comment share and subscribe thank you